Hello there, Aries. Welcome to your love, romance, and relationship reading. So um, there was a message that I left out in the general reading, and uh, I want to just uh, talk about it now. I mentioned that there was somebody who had a little bit of a victim mentality, who doesn't really take initiative, and it, I feel like it might be a relationship partner. Um, and I'm feeling like this is somebody who's very, very slow to do things. They're very deliberate. They're very slow. And a lot of the times they might have to take, you know, directions from you before they make a move. And you're, you're kind of tired of having to play the lead, okay? And so one thing I want you to be very, very careful, and this is like, you know, um, this is like setting the pattern for a relationship. And you want to make sure that you don't, early on, especially in relationships, and so this might be helpful for those of you who are single out there trying to find new relationship partner. You want to give the other person leeway so that they can take charge early on in the relationship. So for example, um, be careful about pronouns that you use, okay? So they're coming to you and they're like, hey, do you want to go crabbing, you know, for example? And you're like, okay, uh, that sounds fun. Where do you want to go? Rather than where should we go? Because then, you know, inadvertently, I feel like the responsibility of planning things out and working out the logistics of it will automatically fall upon you because you're very action oriented and you need to kind of like match your energy with the other person you need to slow things down a little bit and take allow them an opportunity the the time and the room to start to take charge okay so be careful about the pronouns that you use where do you want to go what do you want to do rather than okay what day should we go when should we go and then you find yourself kind of like spiraling out of control where you um, you are like pigeonholed into the role of the planner. And so that's how we get around that energy, okay? So let's pull out the rest of the cards here. Um, I'm also sensing you're with a relationship partner that you really, really care about. You know, it's a, uh, you're with someone who's actually very, very good. Like they, they have a good heart. You know, you, you can't say anything bad about them, but they lack in motivation. They might lack that initiative and you're comparing them with somebody else that you dated in the past somebody that you know you high, hold in high regard still and you're just like i wish you know so and so were like my ex i wish so and so were uh, a lot more ambitious were a lot more of a goal getter were a lot more um takes a lot more initiative and so this seems to me like uh, something that you can definitely talk to your partner about if you care about your partner, you know, like if there's no hard feelings, if you find yourself like you can definitely be with them long term, you want to have this conversation, okay? Like, I would like it if you can take more initiative, I would like it. It's hard for you to have these conversations, I feel. And uh, maybe some of you might not feel like that's the problem. But then really think about it and, you know, try to get to the bottom of it because I feel like that might be the main problem. It might manifest in other ways, but I feel like the bottom line is you want your partner to take initiative. You're tired of constantly having to take charge. And so let's not create cycles. Let's nip them in the bud, not create cycles where we are constantly pigeonholed into a specific role in a relationship that we don't want to be in, okay? So you want an equal relationship partner, but you also want somebody that matches, you know, your drive, your ambition, and that takes initiative to plan things. Okay. Wow, so we've got some, I, I feel like the cards are actually very, very good. They're very bright and shiny. And um, let me talk about the foundation first. I started doing the foundation first for the other signs, and I feel like it, um, it brings the narrative together. So I, I, I feel like it's helpful. So let's talk about this. We have here the Nine of Coins and the Ten of Coins. And this is also something, going back to um, what I mentioned earlier about needing to catch up 
want, waiting for your partner to catch up. They're not on your level. They're getting there. And um, I do feel like, you know, it's, a, it's an, an abundance in numbers type of an, uh, a relationship. So the Ten of Pentacles, this is kind of like building wealth. Two people who are financially, uh, they're okay. And then combining the income together, they're riding high. They're able to travel together. They're able to explore and see the world. They're able to plan trips and they're able to afford a lot of luxury items because of combined income. So you might be in a relationship with somebody where one person makes a lot and the other person doesn't make that much, but combined income, the two of you are doing really, really well. Make sure, I feel like one person might be self-employed and uh, I feel like, you know, they, they're okay financially on their own. But I, I just feel like this element here about whoever is uh, making more money, you're, you're not really keeping scores here. So if you're making more money, I feel like you want to compensate, you want to take care of your relationship partner. But it can also create a pattern. It, it sets like an unhealthy cycle. And um, you basically need to, you know, really, really um, sit down and kind of draw out a budget, draw out like a balance sheet, because over time, I feel like this can create a lot of problems in the relationship. And, you know, a lot of marriage counselors say that money is a big, big cause for divorces within couples or breakups as well. So you might need to balance this out. So, for example... Uh, you know, have a percentage system. Um, if you're making like 70% and the other person is making like 30, you know, make sure that your rent is calibrated or prorated so that it's fair for both parties. The person that is making more, they want to give more. And I feel like this might be you or your partner, but it just doesn't feel to me like it's fair. There is a fairer way to do this so that it doesn't cause uh, discord in the relationship, okay? And then likewise, I feel like this is also about, you know, creating a family, adding more members in the family, such as pregnancies, having children, getting married, um, stabilizing your relationship, like taking the relationship to the next level. And, you know, the natural, pro the natural progression of a relationship, having children, buying a property together, settling down together, and, you know, all of that. that. I feel like your partner right now, is at a point where they are financially very very stable and you might have expressed that you wanted these things and now they are catching up to you okay now they're catching up to you and um, it's still gonna take them a little bit of time to get used to it but they are trusting in the relationship and they're catching up to you and so I feel like you might be dealing here I you know, both of these are pentacles, so um, it indicates to me like a strong earth sign. So this is a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. I also feel some of you might have had like a missed uh, connection with an earth sign in your past. You are now moving on and they want to reach out, for example. I feel like that energy coming through. Um, you're now in another relationship that has gone the distance, you know, that is very good. It's very stable. And they're flying up behind you, trying to catch up to you, trying to, you know, get you to abort your plans and to go back to them. Um, your current relationship partner, I feel like, is, is the right one. And this person is not on your level, okay? So that's what I'm feeling here in the foundation. In the past, we have the lovers. And um, the lovers can indicate a situation where there was... Um, I'm sensing like even infidelity, incompatibility, or even like, um, it seems to me like it's some type of uh, underhanded tactics. You know, it's, it's like you were, you, you were with somebody and they were in another relationship and the two of you got together because you really liked each other. And it, it's like a combination of that. Okay, or you were with an ex that you really, really love. They try to move on. They try to, you know, have another relationship. And somehow <clears throat> you might have gotten in between them or they might have done that to you. So there's some type of a third party interference in the relationship. And I feel like it was done with a lot of stealth where not a lot of people know about it. 
it was done very meticulously. So you got exactly what you wanted. But I do feel that it, it wasn't all, you know, uh, a walk in the park. You might have wanted that person. And it just seemed like, you know, on, on paper, it looked very good. There's great chemistry, great passion in the relationship, but I do feel zero compatibility here. And so the relationship was very turbulent, on again, off again. It really corroded your self-esteem. When they left, you were like, you know, uh, rolled up in the fetal position crying. When they were there, they lit up your world. So I feel like the, the relationship itself was very emotionally charged. It was very dependent upon the other person. And it was also, it, it was not the right person for you, okay? And um, I feel like you had to do a lot of, you had to do a lot of like, um, it, it's almost like a lot of compromise with that person, but they were very stubborn. And I feel like you kind of lost yourself in the relationship. You compromised a little bit too much. And I always like do the Aries reading uh, asking you to compromise, but I feel like this was a relationship where you didn't know where you stand. You didn't know when is enough's enough because I feel like you're chemically, you know, um, drawn to the other person. It's passionate. It's very exciting. But I just feel like it's not the right person because there's a lot of innate incompatibilities here. Okay. This is not seeing eye to eye. This is like um, a relationship that is based on attraction, on physical attraction, but very little else. And you might not have, you know, common goals and, and plans in life. Which brings us to the present environment. We have here the sun. And uh, I feel like some of you have already found another person. And I'm seeing as well, possibly another fire sign. So a Sagittarius, uh, an, another Aries or a Leo. And we also have, because they're kind of like you, there's also a conflict coming into the picture. And I also feel like you are still very, very independent. You know, you have a partner that might be a lot more on the passive end and so you want it to be exciting you want it to be passionate and very um you know like emotionally charged as well but i feel like this person is not really standing their ground and this person is a little bit more passive so just make sure that you can slow down your energy and not cause strife unnecessary strife in the relationship just make sure that you don't uh, nitpick over the wrong things because i feel like they're they're a little bit more they're not confrontational they're not confrontational at all okay so i i feel here if you have exes contacting you um just make sure you don't deal with them because it's going to bring that up in the relationship and it's going to create trust issues and i also feel as well you know just be very patient with your partner because it seems like it seems like they're afraid to talk to you. It seems like they're afraid of conflict. They're afraid of fights and they're afraid of disputes and they might not want to talk to you or they might not feel comfortable talking to you because they don't want to get yelled at or they don't want to get uh, to aggravate a situation. So they're a little bit more on the passive end. OK, but I feel like they treat you well. I feel like you're feeling quite happy, feeling quite happy in the relationship. And uh, I just feel like they're not as independent. They're not independent of thought. They're not assertive. And there's some something missing here. Crowning this reading, we have the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune is basically uh, things turning for the better, OK? It's in the upright position. So I do feel progress, um, movement. Uh, having a certain sense of like clarity regarding a relationship and it is linked up here with an air sign so we have here this is a an aquarius a gemini or a libra sun moon or rising when it shows up as the king this is someone who's very very intelligent when it's in the reverse position it's somebody who um they're intelligent but they are they lack a sense of strategy they lack a sense of like a, a a clearly defined and a definite sense of direction so there might have been a lot of arguments in the relationship between you and this person where are we going are we getting married 
are we having children? When are we settling down? When are you going to propose? You know, all of these things in terms of relationship, if you've had these problems in the past, I do feel that things are going to be turning in your favor and there will be, you know, matrimony, there will be um, a compromise with this person. And I feel like, you know, they're, they're showing up in the reverse position because I feel like they mean the best, but their life as well might not have, you know, caught up to yours and they're waiting for their life to catch up before they can make these promises, okay? So it's not somebody that makes promises lightly, but when they make promises, I feel like you can hold them to it, okay? Which brings us into the future position. We have here the Two of Wands, and the Two of Wands usually indicate some type of a physical rift, like an emotional or a physical disconnect between you and a person that you're dating. Um, there might be additional travel and movement for you or your partner, and as a result of it, you might be kind of um, physically away from each other. And there can also be arguments and disputes as well because of exes, uh, past energies. And I want to say like a lot of it is self-imposed because I feel like you're measuring your new partner based on the standards from a past relationship. Be very careful about that. We need to start every new relationship with a clean slate. Of course, we learn from the past, but you're using criteria from a past person to measure the new person. And you're just like, why can't this person be as strong, as determined, as honest, as clear-headed, as intelligent, whatever the situation is, I feel like that's what's happening. And um, you're comparing apples and oranges, okay? People cannot be compared like that. And um, I honestly feel like there needs to be, you know, cords of attachments that needs to be released between you and an ex. So let things go, otherwise it will destabilize your current relationship and it will create a situation where there is lack of consensus. There is, you know, no mutual plans to build a relationship. And then you find yourself emotionally and financially estranged. Oh, I'm sorry, emotionally and physically estranged from your current relationship partner. So there's conflict coming in. Um, you can take the opportunity to kind of hash things out and uh, uh, reach an agreement. Or you can take the opportunity if you feel like the relationship is not working. I do feel there is a little bit of a break or hiatus in relationships. If you feel they're not working, I feel like some of you, um, you want your partner a specific way and they're not that way. And I feel like these jarring differences are coming into this month. It's also the, during, you know, the time of Mercury retrograde um, from December 2nd until the 23rd. So don't make these, you know, like people are going to aggravate us. Communication will go awry. So just be patient with yourself and be patient with your partner. Okay. So best of luck, Aries, um, you know, calm down a little bit. Okay. And try to get through this month before you make any drastic decisions. Okay. Um, I wish you all the best. Please take care of yourself. Enjoy your holiday season. All right. Bye-bye.